In this video, we will delve into the intricate anatomy of the lacrimal apparatus, exploring its role in tear production and ocular hygiene. In this regard, we will start our presentation with an introduction. Subsequently, we will individually discuss the lacrimal secretory and excretory apparatus. Additionally, we will provide detailed information about its blood and nerve supply. To conclude, we will wrap up by emphasizing the main points and key insights. The lacrimal apparatus is a crucial component of the human eye, playing an essential role in maintaining ocular health and comfort. It is primarily responsible for the production, distribution, and drainage of tears. The apparatus comprises two main parts, each with its distinct functions, the lacrimal secretory apparatus, this part includes the main lacrimal glands, situated in the upper outer region of each orbit, and the accessory lacrimal glands found within the conjunctiva. These glands are responsible for producing tears, which are crucial for keeping the surface of the eye moist, providing nutrients to the cornea, and helping in the defense against infections. The lacrimal excretory apparatus, this system encompasses the lacrimal drainage system. This apparatus ensures that the tears are efficiently drained away from the eye surface after they have performed their lubricating and protective functions. Together, these two parts ensure that the eye remains clear, lubricated, and free from foreign particles and irritants. The harmonious function of the lacrimal apparatus is crucial for optimal visual performance and eye health. Starting our description with the lacrimal secretory apparatus, specifically the main lacrimal gland. This gland, roughly the size of an almond, is characterized by its yellowish-reddish color and a distinct bilobed shape. It's strategically located in the anterior supralateral aspect of the orbit, nestled within the lacrimal fossa of the frontal bone. Anatomically, the gland is divided into two distinct lobes by the lateral horn of the aponeurosis of the levator palpebri superioris muscle, the anterior and inferior palpebral lobe, which is more accessible and clinically significant due to its proximity to the eyelid. The posterior and superior orbital lobe, situated deeper in the orbit. These lobes work in tandem to produce the aqueous layer of the tear film, essential for ocular surface lubrication and protection. The glands ducts open into the superior conjunctival fornix, allowing tears to spread across the eye surface during blinking, thereby playing a crucial role in maintaining ocular health and clear vision. The second component of the lacrimal secretory apparatus comprises the accessory lacrimal glands, which are strategically situated in the conjunctival fornices and along the superior tarsal border. These glands play a pivotal role in continuous lacrimal secretion, ensuring the eye remains moist and well lubricated. They include, Krauser and Wolf ring glands, primarily located in the conjunctiva, contribute to the baseline secretion of tears. Meibomian glands, embedded in the eyelids, are responsible for secreting the oily layer of the tear film. This layer prevents the evaporation of the watery component of tears and maintains tear film stability. Zeiss glands, situated at the base of the eyelashes, and mole glands, also near the eyelashes, secrete substances that contribute to the health of the eyelash follicles and the tear film. A common pathological condition affecting these glands is a sty or hordeolum. This condition manifests as a result of infection or inflammation within these glands. An internal hordeolum, often more painful, is typically caused by an infection in a meibomian gland, leading to a swollen, tender area on the eyelid. Conversely, an external hordeolum, which presents as a localized swelling at the eyelash base, occurs due to infection in either a zeiss gland or a mole gland. These conditions highlight the importance of the accessory lacrimal glands not only in tear production but also in overall ocular health and the potential implications when these glands are compromised. Concerning the lacrimal excretory apparatus, which is responsible for draining tears from the eye into the nasal cavity, it comprises several interconnected structures. The lacrimal lake, a small pool of tears in the conjunctiva at the inner corner of the eye. The lacrimal puncta, tiny openings on the upper and lower eyelids that act as the entry point for tears into the drainage system. The lacrimal canaliculi, small canals that transport tears from the puncta to the lacrimal sac. The junction duct, which is sometimes present as a connection between the canaliculi and the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac, a small chamber where tears from the canaliculi accumulate before draining into the nasolacrimal duct. The nasolacrimal duct, a passage leading from the lacrimal sac to the nasal cavity, facilitating the final drainage of tears. When addressing a watery eye, a common ocular complaint, 
it is essential to initially consider the possibility of blocked tear outflow as a potential cause. This condition, known as epiphora, can be due to various factors such as obstruction in the lacrimal drainage system or eyelid malpositions. Identifying and addressing these obstructions is crucial. Only after ruling out tear drainage issues should one consider diagnosing hypolacrimation. This condition, which refers to excessive tear secretion, can be caused by numerous factors including eye irritation, dry eye syndrome, or allergic reactions. The lacrimal gland primarily receives its blood supply from the lacrimal artery, a branch of the ophthalmic artery. The venous drainage of the lacrimal gland is facilitated through the lacrimal vein, which drains into the superior ophthalmic vein and eventually empties into the cavernous sinus. In terms of lymphatic drainage, the lacrimal gland is primarily associated with the preauricular and submandibular lymph nodes. On the other hand, the arterial supply to the lacrimal duct primarily comes from several key sources, 1. The superior and inferior palpebral arteries, which are branches of the ophthalmic artery. 2. The angular artery, a branch of the facial artery. 3. The infraorbital artery. 4. Nasal branches of the sphenopalatine artery. In terms of venous drainage, the venous drainage for the upper part of the lacrimal ducts is directed toward the superior ophthalmic vein, which subsequently leads to the cavernous sinus. For the lower part, venous drainage flows into the angular vein, eventually connecting to the external jugular venous system. Furthermore, the lymphatic drainage of the lacrimal ducts predominantly involves the submandibular lymph nodes and the deep cervical glands. This lymphatic system plays a crucial role in the immune response and fluid balance of the lacrimal apparatus. The nerve supply to the lacrimal gland involves three key components, 1. Sensory innervation, this is provided afferently via the lacrimal nerve, which is a branch of the ophthalmic division of the fifth cranial nerve, also known as the trigeminal nerve. 2. Secretomotor parasympathetic innervation, this efferent innervation stems from the superior salivary nucleus via the seventh cranial nerve, commonly referred to as the facial nerve. 3. And sympathetic innervation, this component originates in the superior cervical ganglion and regulates the vascular tone of the glands. For the lacrimal ducts, the infratrochlear nerve, a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, supplies the upper portion. And the anterior superior alveolar nerve, a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, supplies the lower portion. To conclude, the lacrimal apparatus is an intricate and essential system comprising structures dedicated to the production and conveyance of tears. It includes the lacrimal glands, which function as exocrine glands, and the lacrimal drainage system, which facilitates the movement of tears from the eye surface to the nasal cavity. The lacrimal glands are tasked with the secretion of lacrimal fluid, commonly known as tear fluid, onto the surface of the eye. This fluid is not merely for moisture but serves a multipurpose role, it provides lubrication to reduce friction during eyelid movement, protection against environmental irritants and microbial invaders, and delivers vital nutrients to the avascular regions of the conjunctiva and cornea. Once secreted, the lacrimal fluid is distributed across the eye surface during blinking and is eventually directed into the lacrimal puncta. From here, it travels through a sophisticated network of lacrimal canaliculi, the lacrimal sac, and the nasolacrimal duct, finally reaching the nasal cavity where it evaporates or is reabsorbed. However, the lacrimal apparatus can be prone to various disorders. Obstructions or anomalies within the tear drainage pathways can lead to epiphora, manifesting as persistent tearing or watery eyes. Another common condition affecting the lacrimal system is dacryocystitis, an inflammation of the lacrimal sac. This typically painful condition can result in noticeable swelling, redness, and tenderness in the inner corner of the eye, adjacent to the nose.